On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. Hello, hello, everybody. We kicked Heath out for one more week. (laughs) (laughs) He'll be back next week, but for now, the ladies are taking the reins. Well, the ladies and the gentlemen. Hi, everybody. I'm Jenny Ann Chondo, along with Jasmine, who is uh, filling in. That's what I mean when I say the ladies are taking the reins. We are. I'm I'm already third billing. Oh, no. Man. It's only been (laughs) one week. Heath, please. Oh, we have Zach in the house as well. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. You're welcome, (laughs) Zach. Looking forward (laughs) to another episode. Howdy. Oh, okay. We were just talking offline about this, and I said we've got to discuss this on the podcast off the top. Uh, whether you let your significant other or tell your significant other to watch or to not watch your Instagram stories, because in my opinion, all the fun goes down in the Instagram stories. Right. So what you does just that have mean? this situation yes. okay. happen. Okay. Uh, let me explain. And, and tell like us, I said, Jack. Matt already assumes there's some malice involved here, and I'm hoping that's not the case. <laughs> you cruel man. Uh, so I, I'm on Twitter. Uh, Christine, my beau, is on Instagram, and and she told me the other day because I've been trying to get into Instagram more, trying to do what the kids Which do. Which I the appreciate. IG. The youth, as, as they say. Uh, you uh, are the youth. You're just old for a youth. I thank you. I'm an old soul. <laughs> uh, you really I, are. I thought he was older than <laughs> yeah. what he told me off. I thank you I guess yes Um, yes it's a compliment I I have been trying to get into Instagram more and Christine's over there and I'm on Twitter and I'll sometimes at her like some cute (laughs) thing she does or we'll be at a concert or something I'll tag her uh, and, and she does that to me on Instagram, which I didn't really know about. And apparently it's all positive stuff. It's like, here, well, so I'm, thinking, think, about right? Get, right? I'm okay. thinking about getting this gift for Zach, this sweet thing. Or, or Zach said this funny thing. Or, or Zach's the greatest, because I am. Uh, uh, <laughs> and, and she told me, you can, you can get on Instagram. You can scroll. Don't look at my Instagram story. Because that's where it all happens. That's where the fun <laughs> happens, as you said. And to me, I, on social media, I'm like, look, if you're, it's, it's fair game. It's out there for the public. Yeah. Like, if I get on and see it tough you know like that's on you uh but at the same time i, I want to observe uh you know her habits and i don't want to throw off her game uh, as sweet as uh, me centric as it may be so i was curious what you thought about this well i don't think she has anything to hide matt stop being so cynical yeah matt um yeah but it is fun. sorry see i have a better situation than christine because yes. i talk about heath all the time on instagram mm-hmm. it's one of my and, favorite things and ever he, yeah and that's everyone's favorite thing like, and they my don't care about too, no. other stuff. seeing that yes but um but he doesn't watch the stories yeah, he, does. he, doesn't, he probably doesn't even have Instagram. He yeah, d- no, he, he has Instagram. And the only stories in his Instagram are the ones he reposts that yeah. I tag him in. Yeah. Aww. And he often reposts them incorrectly, well, which is what led to me blocking him a while back. My oh, favorite wow. thing is, yeah. so Jenny Whoa. is part of every trunk club possible. There's <laughs> okay. always a box opening on her Instagram story, really? whether it's oh, food wow. or clothes yes. or whatever it is. And so she always has, she'll be like, babe, open the box. He's like, Jenny, why am I opening this box? Why? <laughs> It's a shirt, Jeannie. <laughs> and she's so, so excited. I'm telling you, I'm obsessed with it. Now my boyfriend's obsessed. Oh, like, that's what he waits for. He's like, have you checked out Jenny's latest story? I'm like, yeah, about the box that he yes. opened. He's yes. going to be an Instagram star. I love it. Oh, really? yes. Great. He is. So, what yeah, I do the tote. I do Stitch Fix. I do Trunk Club. Everything. I do, like, random meal delivery services. And I'm like, try it, try it. And yeah. he's like, yeah, it's like chicken. Thanks, babe. It's she's chicken. part of a box club that opens a box that's in a box. Yeah. Loves it's just a box. in the mail, yeah. Yes. So, I think you should stay off christine's instagram stories i until, should observe that well yeah. they unless they're in her little top circle thing they'll disappear after 24 hours so now she is warning that you're on there and that from now on you'll be watching 
you can't do it forever, right? You have to be like, look, at some point, clean up your act, <laughs> stop saying things about me, or at I least not not be cool with I, me. I, uh, really, I'm it, or right? what? Or we're not together anymore? I realize I'm, I'm falling down. The, like, I'm falling down the rabbit hole in this. This isn't our headline for this segment. We'll get to it. But I I I feel like I, one, I'm flattered. Okay, thank you. It's very sweet. And two, like it's just a sweet thing. Why wouldn't I be flattered to see that in the middle of my work day? I'm, right. I'm here. I'm miserable. Like every time, except this show. And, <laughs> yeah, and nice uh, save. Right. Nice yeah, save. And, and 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 I see this cute little thing. And I'm like, oh, that's so sweet that somebody thinks about me that way. And I move on. It doesn't have to be a deal. It doesn't have to be. Don't look. Oh God, you can't see it. Like what? Are, what are we worried oh, about? I can't here, wait. Right? When we get off the show, I'm going to ask you for her handle because I'm going to start following her. Really? Yes. She'll be oh, so flattered. Yes. That, yeah. that will make so much for her. Oh, I, I will to too. Her. We got to okay. do this. Okay. All the fun <laughs> happens oh, there. Oh no. Don't exactly. you like fun, Zach? I Why are you a fun sucker? I am a fun. You're okay. a fun sucker. Okay. Let's hear that headline. Yes, the first headline brought to us by. Jasmine Satry, of course. That's yeah. me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I you, like this one that you brought. You brought this one in. I dig this a lot. Uh, Eric V. Bailey on Twitter, at Eric V. Bailey. He hopped on Twitter and he said, hi, Twitter. What did you have in 1998 that you no longer have in 2018? 20 years ago. A variety of responses. Jasmine, you want to hit us with uh, sure. some well, of the Sure. Well, I responded. And this went viral. Crazy, it did. Oh, like yes. thousands of shares. Mm-hmm. And it was fun, some of the responses. Well, I responded. I said, 56K modem, my virginity, and a giant zip-up case for all my CDs I'd keep in my car. Everybody had that. <laughs> the reason you don't have that zip-up case because it got stolen, probably. Yeah. A lot. Oh, case yes. Everybody's case CDs got stolen. That's what um, it was all about. Right. Some of these other responses were my 32-inch waist that I missed. <laughs> um, true that, true that. Uh, Nintendo 64, shout out to that. Nokia with the game Snake. I had some of these. A VCR, a rotary phone. VCR, rotary phone. This one, your AIM name. Ooh. Your AOL oh, yeah. instant message. Shout out to mine, J Princess 12 at AOL. Oh, J Princess you still know it. 12. Very self important. I know. To totally. You should get it tattooed totally. on your wrist or something. That, well. feeling of, that feeling of panic whenever the door opened. and somebody oh. like, yeah. Yes, it was terrible. You minimized Ooh. so fast. Yes, and all my font was Comic Sans. It was great. Always. Um, Comic Sans. I didn't realize a lot of people have like a vendetta against Comic Sans. Did you know that's that? That's why I did it because I was the anti. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, here it I is. I think it's super cute. It's I so cute. You were my too recipes cool for in it. Right. I didn't even know until like six months ago that it wasn't cool. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So oh, I was following you, Princess. Actually, there was no space for the eyes that was Princess J Princess? Oh, cool. J Princess. If anybody can track that handle down, oh, that'd yeah. be so great. Um, is, that, is that open on Twitter? Let me check. Tr- uh, try it. Uh, CD Walkman. Remember that the CD mm-hmm. Walkman. All the rich people had that. Oh yeah. Um, let's see here. My, oh, my failed divorce. It's kind of dark. Okay. It's really dark. dark. A lot of people okay. are throwing well, stuff well, here. Okay, you're moving on. Uh, huh, bubble furniture. I don't remember the What's bubble. That? No, frat guys had that. Look at this, Jenny. That's bubble oh, furniture. Oh, yes. Yes. Frat guy. <laughs> yes. No, we don't have that. No, that's tacky. <laughs> that is not. That's terrible. Cheap, though. No, yeah. Cinder block furniture. That's another one here. Yes. Cinder block. Who? Ha- yes. I'm not even going to start with this. Uh, let's hear. Oh, Orbit drinks. Do you remember the Orbit drinks? Oh, I remember the Orbit no. drinks. No. Oh, my gosh. No. They what were was like, that? It was like bottled and it was like clear, but it had little bubbles, but it was like, uh, it was like, ju- there was like juice, little juice yeah. pockets in the bubbles when you drink like it. Bubble the Orbit tea? I was no. cut. A similar concept. Similar with concept. With like okay. object bubbles in there, but they weren't, yeah. I guess they didn't get like those to Idaho. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those did never made it over. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sunday paper, getting that. Remember you'd get that? It was like three bucks. Oh, yeah. I worked the paper route. Oh, it my was, gosh. You worked a paper route? Yes. I've had every job. Remember dishwasher at Taco Bell, worked a paper route, a taught dance classes, taught snowboarding lessons. Anything there was, <gasps> I, I would I would, I would, love to teach you. Oh, I've heard, I've heard you're price. very good at it. Yeah. <laughs> Your husband's taught you well. Yeah, right? Oh, gosh. Um, but so yeah, yes, just a litany out. of things. This was <laughs> right. 98 though. I mean, think about 1998. The things that were going on in the world. So I think back on when I do a second shot on this headline, like what did we have 20 years ago? How can we? This is truly the ignorance on fire type look back because think about what your mindset was 20 years oh, ago in terms of what you were going to clueless. accomplish. I was clueless. Right. Clueless, but also didn't you have high aspirations for what your life was going to be like? And and weren't you less aware of the potential obstacles? I did, then my career happened. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. hi that, Then I actually took a swing at yes, that ball. No, that no, it no all you're, fell right. Apart. you're right, Jenny. <laughs> you look through the world, it was nothing, everything was at your fingertips. There was no negativity. There was such a positive, hungry energy. Well, I, so what would happen? Yeah. Think about this. What would happen if you took the wisdom and experience you have right now and combined it with that aspirational quality and ignorance on fire and combined it with that lack of knowledge of potential obstacle. I mean, that is the unstoppable formula. Sure. If we can hold on to that 
that dream. I mean, I still p- tell people, you know, people say, well, so what do you want to, what do you want to do? And I say, I want to be on a national TV show. If someone has to do the Today Show, why not me? And I know for sure there's a hundred percent chance a lot of people look at me and think, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> you know, why? that's done. You know, you're past that. But but that, but I'm not past that. You know what I mean? So, but but I have to dig really deep to think. Okay, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm very aware of the the chances of that happening and the agents that you have to have and the connections you have to have. But why not continue forth with my career in a mindset of thinking I can achieve my dream job in the same way and in, with the same gumption as I had when I was 21 years old and graduating from college and had my whole world ahead of me. Yeah, you see what I'm why saying? Not? I think yeah. it's really an unstoppable combination if we can, because we're not trying to go back and get our VHS tapes or no. you know any of these other things from 20 My years NSYNC ago. posters. I actually do want that. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay, so we're going to go time. back for NSYNC and we're going to go back for that same um, you know aspirational quality. It doesn't mean that you have to go back and you know, okay, if you said you want to be a firefighter and then you realize that's not what you want to be. I'm not saying that, but just like with the same optimism about your future. Sure. Can I take a stab at this one? Yes. I think the biggest Second thing uh, is is time. Because when you look back, you've got yeah. ro- you've got rose colored glasses on. Sure. Of course, everything seemed great back sure. then. And it was like, yeah, everything's gonna work out for us. And, and for me, I like to think I was that way. And really, I was like, well, everything's everything will work out. I'll I'll make it happen. And to be fair, I'm on this show, so it yes, did. Yes, you but, have uh, credit where it's due. I think a big part of it is you look back and you think, man, twenty whole years. And where did it get me? And like, obviously it got us a lot of places, but you think it could have gotten you more. So when you look forward, you should think the same way. You're like, I have so much time. I have so much time to make something happen and I should seize the opportunity, right? Yes, Yes, I love that. I really, really love that. That made sense, I think. No, it did because you don't, that gets lost in the shuffle. And I think, but though, the older you get, the more you appreciate that time. Yeah. Because Mm -hmm. you're so in the moment when you're young, you have no scope of life. You know, mm-hmm. you think you've got all the answers. Mom and dad are still dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. You know, you are 17 <laughs> and you know everything, you know? Big time. And <laughs> you just don't have a true actual grasp and appreciation for time because mm-hmm. you haven't lived life. You haven't right. experienced loss and death and all these other things that really make that powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, I-, I would say I would kind of shift this more of what I, at my age now, <clears throat> 23 would (laughs) tell myself then that girl that thought she knew it all what i would tell myself now knowing everything that i know and what i've been Mm -hmm. through and how many guys i would have told myself to stay away from and just opportunities and and things i I would really i would love to have that sit down with myself from 20 years ago and impart everything that i know now and everything i've gone through to just shake myself then and go girl you have no idea yeah and it's gonna be (laughs) fine it's gonna everything's gonna be fine but Everything isn't, you're not owed things. Things take, you have to work for things. And the people and things in your life that are worth it will be worth that. Mm -hmm. Instead of just these vapid things that you're drawn to or into or think that are going to fulfill you, which they end up not doing. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do. Mm. I love it all the way around. Really good second shot. So yeah, just as we go into this little break here, I encourage everybody to combine a lot of deep All stuff we're throwing the at y'all. vigor you had <laughs> 20 years ago with the wisdom you've accumulated over the last 20 years. We'll be back with the second segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. He folks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. To all my friends in the great state of Texas, if you have not taken advantage, I have a way to save you a ton of money. I have saved over about $3,000 in the last year, and I have no hassle. Go to energyogre.com, put in the promo code SECONDSHOT. Now listen, promo code SECONDSHOT, and you're going to get a free month just for signing up and saving a ton of money. So don't be crazy. Stop sitting around talking about is this the real deal, and go do it right now. Energyogre.com. Dot com promo code second shot in a free month thanks go get it now run ready aim fire second shot is back for another round on rncn you know when you're scrolling through someone's instagram like you just started following them and you're kind of like oh what have they been up to for the last you know Five years and you're way in deep and you like a picture and you feel really it's weird about the it. Worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the worst. It is the worst. That's I've done that no all it, what's worse is if it's like with an ex. So Oh, if it's even remotely <laughs> odd or weird, it's way it's worse. It's embarrassing. Yeah. You want to just like oh. Oh, or yeah. like the you, ex's new girlfriend. You're like, no, no, no. no. Oh, like, and ah. like, 
<laughs> they're like at the beach in a bathing suit yes, or something. It's like, so oh, weird. No. And you know that other people can be seeing what you're liking too. So even if you unlike oh, it, they can the see like on their feed that you went oh, down sure. and liked it. It is yeah. the worst. I, I post something, nobody ever sees it. I like a picture from five years ago. And the whole world gets it. <laughs> Everybody gets a notification. Look what Zach did. This one thing. It's great. So it's I just did that to your girlfriend because I got in deep on the profile and then saw this cute picture of her and this <gasps> orange is my favorite Let's color. Let's together. Aww. And it's, uh, well, Guys, that's not the one with the two of them, but that's oh, the one yeah. in the cheerleading outfit that I liked, and it's deep. It's from a long time ago, and now Cosplay. she knows I was like scrolling <laughs> 2006. Until August. August. I'm, I'm looking okay. forward to that conversation. I'm like, I, told, I told everybody about the Instagram thing you said not to talk about. That one thing, I told everybody. Everybody I could find. It'll be good. <laughs> She'll hate anyway, <laughs> we do have sort of now that we're finally in the holiday spirit and people aren't mad about people being excited about Christmas because Thanksgiving is over. That's right. We can talk about Christmas. Yes. Tis the season. Christmas music all around. An anonymous Santa Claus pays off all layaway items in Vermont Walmart. Lucky shoppers at Walmart and Derby have one less thing to worry about this holiday season thanks to a mystery do-gooder. The man paid off the entire lot of layaway items at the store near the Canadian border. Julie Gates of Eden Mills says uh, she caught the man on her way out, on his way out, says uh, she asked him, who can afford to pay for everyone's layaway? She said the man responded, Santa Claus can. Oh, the man declined the to give his name. Store officials decline to say how much the man spent. It's a simple I love story. Stories like that. Yeah, it is. It is so uh, you know touching because I think about layaway and I remember my mom teaching us about layaway and just the way it worked and just okay. So if you know, and it was it was usually for essentials. I mean, it's you know a jacket or you know snow boots or things like that in Idaho, and it was it taught us a lot about the way money works and the way that if you don't have enough money for something, you know, we put it on layaway until we make enough money, then, you know, that's where it will be and we'll get it when it's done. And uh, it just means a lot for those families, you know, that if somebody's putting on something, something on layaway, it's something they really need. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's touching. And I wanted to look up this, I know, knew there was an Oprah quote on giving back that, uh, that was meaningful. And this is a really short one to move forward. You have to give back simple Whoa. but think about yeah. it yeah no that's awesome isn't mm. that true you think about different you know little ways we, we don't all have the capacity to pay off an entire store's layaway but perhaps do we have the capacity to do something for someone you know between now and christmas or over the course of the season when you know when people are struggling yeah and i mean you just kind of think about that just on your daily just when you're just out and about when you're just living life on the daily. I mean, I, like you said, not all of us have the means to do something huge, but no act is too big. Something mm -hmm. you never know how you're going to change someone's life. Something really small. I'll even give you, for instance, a while back ago, a couple months ago, I was at a restaurant. Um, the waiter we had was really awesome. Just this young guy, just super great. Anyway, we, this great energy we talked about, you know, him and he just moved here from DC and uh -huh. he had, um, you know, he had to work like triple and, and quadruple shifts essentially so he could make enough money for him and his wife who just had a baby who's in the hospital and they just obviously didn't have much. And so I had just gotten, you know, a bonus at work. And so I'm like, you know what? Give me that. I'm going to give him like a really nice tip. And it was really, really nice. Mm -hmm. It was essentially my almost my entire bonus. Mm -hmm. And so I gave oh, it wow. to him. And I by no means am I rich. So I don't want this to sound like, oh, whatever. So he came back to look at the check. And he's like, I think you miss this isn't right. And I'm like, no, no, it's right. And he's like, what? And I'm like, and I looked at him and I said, look, don't worry about it. Go home, be with your family. Your baby's sick. You don't need to be working to the bone. And you guys, this man just bawled. Like he just dropped and started bawling. And it was the most incredible feeling because I knew this guy had like the weight of the world on him. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest guys. And you know, I said, <laughs> look, welcome to Texas, basically. <laughs> Cause he, he, you know, he's from DC and I was like, yeah. look, just go be with your family. Here you go. And when you think about little things like that, it really makes you think about it on the daily. Now, yes, of course it's great to do it at Christmas time, but let's challenge ourselves to do it every day. Little mm -hmm. things, little things. Well, and the other thing too is when it's um, sh certain that that was unexpected. Totally unexpected. For him. No, he was totally taken aback. You know, and um, we also have to have an awareness about, so a couple of things from that story from you is that you paid attention to another human being, yeah. you know, and, and learned about his story. Paid attention enough to know, okay, sick baby, just moved here from DC. You know, a lot of people aren't even communicating with one another to know what their potential needs might be. Yeah. And that human communication is 
so, so important. So the people in our lives, and maybe you see, you know, the postal worker in and out, and it's like, well, how long have they been there? Do you know anything about them? You know, it, they're obviously at work, but is there time for you to, you know, check on them or say, how you doing? Or, oh gosh, you're here early today. It's something different. Or, you know, how's the route going? We, that happened with ours. And he was like, oh, I'm actually going to surgery. Well, it's like human connection. Exactly. Like, you have to keep that up. See, and I think with what, the realm of what you do, the realm of what I do in our careers, we, we love people's stories. We love where people come from. And so we have this intuition to talk to people you know i've always been obsessed with people's stories and who they are mm -hmm. what makes you you mm -hmm. I, I i like to go deeper than just the superficial how's your day going oh weather's terrible and i mean who are you what makes you you let me find out about you and i think we just need to do that more this world needs that i feel like we have so many people who just feel like no one just talks to them yeah you don't yeah, to know, feel invisible is an to awful feel feeling invisible just i mean think about just that like you said with your was it your news carrier said somebody what your yeah the uh, postal worker the yeah. postal worker just that alone, like, wow, she cared enough to ask me about me. And Zach, you had an, an interesting second shot on this yeah. too. Um, I, yeah, I, to me, it's so anonymous. easy nowadays, yeah, to, to stay anonymous. That, that That's truly powerful to me. Um, not, of course, any more than paying off an entire Walmart's worth of layaway items. I don't even know where to start with that. But uh, in the age of social media, in the age of hashtags, in the age of, 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 of uh, Twitter handles, and, and it's so easy to throw a shameless plug in for yourself, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so easy for sure. to be follow me, up, follow me on Insta or whatever. Uh, for somebody nowadays to do something so tremendous and, and not leave any kind of a calling card, not, yes. not to say, hey, uh, follow me here, or if you want more good deeds, check out my hot YouTube channel or anything like that, to just truly uh, do something for other people with nothing in return is, is, is more powerful now, it feels like, than it was 20 years ago. Sure. Mm -hmm. Stunning stuff. 100%. Yeah. yeah um, I agree with you. Yeah. Because, I mean, it wouldn't have been hard for this guy to be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> follow me on, on Facebook or whatever. The but Walmart Santa Claus. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. At the How, Walmart oh, man. Santa Claus. At Walmart Santa Claus is yeah. probably, if it's not taken yet, it should be. You right. should take yeah. it. That's your totally. new IG account. Done. Done. Uh, done. Ding. Nobody take that. Uh, it, it's It would have been so easy to turn this into a branding thing. It got news recognition. Like, everybody, I feel like, is so centered on. Everyone's trying to get news recognition everybody's trying to break for the somewhere. wrong reason you know how often yeah. in the, working in the news business i get hit up by companies that say we want our business to be featured i notice that you often show up at charity events what kind of charity event could we do in order to get that recognition and right. i tell them that is backwards this is not i mean look if it's a confidant i i get it you're, you're trying to get publicity we're all doing our thing sure. we're sure. trying to earn a sure, living sure but we have to be helping with the intention of helping yeah we right. have to be i mean otherwise the the people that you are gifting to are not going to receive the full gifts with the full impact because there's no energy behind exactly. that exactly it's a very it's a very it is a very self-serving energy it right. is yeah, to, to, to be doing it uh, exclusively for other people and not for yourself. And you're right, so many people approach it the opposite way. How do I, I mean, there are YouTube mm -hmm. channels out there with people who donate to charity and get like a million hits and then they make another video where they donate to charity. I'm like, you're doing that for the wrong, you're doing it for yourself. But do you think like, it's because yeah. it's what we're conditioned to be? Maybe. Think about, uh, think about that. Think about what okay, social yeah. media has done. Conditioned to be, how do you uh. mean? Like by by the current social media Wait, climate, absolutely, okay. with with the with the current social media climate and how it's everything's instant, right. me me me, and who's who's this and who's that. Let me, how many likes can I get here? Right. And whatever we, this is sick, but it's like you get your self worth from that, mm -hmm. sure. and you get the worth of your deed or your act based on that. And I will say, of course, news stations do cover you know, sure. big charitable events, the Salvation Army, Coats for Kids, you know, I mean, so many of these things, these food pantries, and that's done with good intention. Right. Um, now that's, I, I, no media outlet is doing that with ill intent, sure. but it does kind of put the highlight on, look, this business is doing this, and then other businesses think, oh, in order for me to get on TV, I have to help people. No, 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 <laughs> no, yeah. that is backwards. Yeah, no, no. That is. Yeah. strike that, reverse it, right. I just and then say, proceed. I just want to say in defense of, or I won't say in defense, but to look on the brighter side of some yeah. of the stuff, of the news coverage of a YouTube video that gets a million hits, um, you can look at that as shameless self-absorption or, or whatever you want to call it, or mm -hmm. you could look at it as, that's a million people who may have been inspired to go do something I hear you. nice for someone else. Sure. So, and that like is still that a point. bunch of money to charity, it's to be fair. Yeah. yeah, right. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, just the fact, I, the way that this this happened is nice. The guy didn't look for anything for himself, but the act itself was got coverage. 
and the act itself was was shared across you know it, we were talking about it here and it was shared on the news about how a guy went in and paid off all this stuff so that mm -hmm. stuff can be inspirational and maybe you don't find personal gain out of it but you can at least try to inspire others by what you do. I guess you're right. I and love not that. Terrible. I'm ethically split on it, but I think yeah, yeah, I get where you're coming from. Well, that's the yeah. whole point of this. Yes. It's just to get the discussion going. And this is this can be a good family discussion, too. I mean, this is kind of like take this one home to your dinner tables tonight and talk about, you know, the impact of what we do and, and how we can all be on the lookout like Jasmine was for the people that we can help just even in a very small way today, tomorrow and into the new year. So we will be back with the third segment of Second Shot. Now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people and i appreciate it thank you guys go pick it up today kick off your boots or suit up the choice is yours welcome back to second shot on rncn Welcome back, everybody. Okay, everybody's still in the house hanging out. The, the conversations offline go completely crazy. Poor Zach. From keto. Ooh, poor me. I, 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 to... It's a privilege to be here. <laughs> is it? We haven't it chased is. you out of here it's yet. It's a responsibility. No, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> we, I, I'm always pestering him with his keto diet because anybody that's on something extreme like that, I feel like it takes such a mental fortitude to stick with it. Wait, y'all said I could eat fat on this. You Where's can. This yes, my whole you life? can, you but you can't have any. Lots of fat. But you, you can't eat, I mean, bread. Rice, potatoes, beans, potatoes. Quinoa. So, like, just start it right. I mean, just Fruit. starting with that, like tortilla chips. Any any so kind can, of bread is so gone. So you couldn't like, even have the butter and tortilla chips. You'd have to just have the butter. So I can you just, just eat a bunch of condiments. Yes. Is basically what keto That's right. is. Yeah. yeah. And mm. asparagus. This mayo. Lots is of great. meat and vegetables. Steak and and asparagus forever. That's a great great start. Yeah. Right. So he says he's going back on it after the new year. Yeah. January first. Maybe one of those guys. Okay. Oh, you're a Jan one guy. It's a shame. I'm gonna I, try man, to get a head start. I'm gonna look fab. I, Jan one. I, I tried I tried weight loss and diets and stuff for, for a good long while. What, 24, 25 years? How yeah. long? Yeah. And nothing ever worked. And one day I was just like, I'm just gonna start doing keto today and just did it for six months. Like just, and it just worked switched. for you. Yeah. Yeah. And then getting off it was the bumpiest That's what I'm ride you. off like ever. Like I wish I could just turn it right back on. You guys, on if way. you are looking for a health related podcast, Dr. Cabral, C A B R A L is my go to. Uh, Heath knows I'm obsessed with him. He puts out a podcast every single day. So, Ooh. and I believe in sharing the love. I don't Daily think that, podcasts. you know, by telling people about other podcasts, it's sure. going to make you not listen to our podcast. Right. You know, more is more and more is better. It's all uh -huh. good. Um, so Dr. Cabral has um, a really, a couple really good episodes about coming off a low carb diet. I should check so, that out. Or coming off keto, you know, that kind of thing, like in a healthy way. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just obsessed with him and natural health and natural nutrition and all Aww. that kind of stuff. Going off on a tangent, I did like the email we got. I Yeah, uh, uh, from Kimberly. I don't, I don't know if we should. Well, her last name's don't, not on here. So yeah. No, oh, yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> I won't worry about it, though. <laughs> uh, where is this going to get me? This is the title of her email. She said, thank you for telling me about the rowing team. This was referring to a couple weeks ago, uh, our, our episode about uh, the, the British rowing team and, and will it make the boat go faster? Mm -hmm. About three episodes back, I think. So go check that out. Matt sent that link in. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I Thank you for What's telling up? me about the rowing team. I have found myself asking myself, where is this going to get me? Will doing this help me meet my meet my goal of losing weight or saving money? Love this concept and it's helped def definitely be help me definitely be more mindful. Love your podcast. Ah, woo, Brighton stories always make me smile. Um, P.S. I'm an admin for an insurance company, and every time I call Colonial, I always ask. I always have to ask if they know you, being Heath. I'm hoping one day we'll sell enough that you'll come visit us. Please bring Jenny and Zach with you. Oh, not that dirty Matt. <laughs> your biggest fan. It says that on here. Yeah, right here it says that. Here it says that. Uh, your biggest fan, Kim. Kimberly. And she's got her, her website for a cool business. Should we plug that or should we not? Well, I don't want to be ooh. weird. Okay, Kimberly, tell us in the Facebook group. Hopefully you you're in the Facebook group. Tell us if we can promote your business yeah. because it's a very cool business and it's you know good to yeah, share Yeah, email the us back or something. Uh, drop us a yeah. line. But the, the main point of this, yes. Uh, she's she found herself asking, out of that. where is this going to get me? 
Will doing this help me meet my goal of losing weight or saving money? Like just whenever she's out and about, just like the rowing thing, whenever uh -huh. she's out and about doing something, she asks herself, you know, if I'm if I'm gonna go party with my friends or something, where's that gonna get me? Mm -hmm. In the big scheme of things, where where is going out with my friends gonna get me? Uh, where am I gonna end up with that? Is that gonna get me towards my goal? Is it gonna lead me towards saving money or losing weight or whatever it is I want to do? Or am I just gonna be spinning my wheels? And it depends it on your it? goal because for some people, their goal, you know, is really to de-stress and sure. to get away from work. So going out with your friends would potentially achieve that goal, sure. or you know, to be more social. But if if you know your goal is to really buckle down and you have some health things to address well then you know maybe not maybe you need a night in or maybe you need to meet the girls for a walk or something like that so it just depends on the goal and really defining it can help you make those decisions easier yeah so shout out to kimberly i know very sweet of her i agree and that's all i have to say about poor her, matt <laughs> yeah poor matt i know how dare she say I know, that how about dare matt? she so, she would never so mistreated she didn't him. actually she never. say that i made that up no she just didn't mention me at so matt's that's, expense that hurts even more uh -huh. it's true oh, hey, meanwhile, hey, she, meanwhile he's running the entire operation here yeah, it's true it's stunning how much matt does you're the guy she, that never gets matt love can't matt can't even start exactly. the timer hey she misspelled my name oh i missed it again i missed the timer one job man i'm one job all right so i was really excited to have jasmine come in here because Thank we you. have known each other professionally working in media in Dallas Fort Worth for many years and I wanted you to talk first of all give like the short version of your resume sort of where you've been okay so that everybody knows sort of you know who they're hearing from okay so I've done this for almost 20 years now and I've done probably every format possible from sports to news to talk to to music formats to everything in between so I've I've done a lot <laughs> for our we do have a lot of people who are listening who are even high schoolers or maybe um, just post high school, college. How did you get your first big break, so to speak? Well, it's funny. So my degree is in TV journalism, mm -hmm. TV broadcast. And so one of my credits was I had to get uh, a radio class in, right? Or I mean, a radio, uh, a radio internship. Uh -huh. So I applied and I always loved sports and I knew that was kind of where I was going to go. So I applied at Fox Sports and got the job and I, it was like base level, whatever. Well, then we were out on a remote and which is like a, a live broadcast and the morning show guys were out there and the one guy was like, okay, you definitely don't want to just be like a stats runner. You don't want to do like the, the low man stuff, so to speak. And I'm like, no, you know, I eventually want to be on the air and blah, blah, blah. And so he's like, okay, I got to move some stuff around. I got to have you as my producer. And I was like 19 at the time. And I was wow. like, okay. And wow. so I was still in college and, you know, doing everything else. And so that's where it started. And then it just, I got really lucky. The right doors opened for me and I was working in major markets and everything else. So yeah, that's, that's how, and what's funny is I went into my original degree was in TV and I've done some TV, but it, the bulk of my career was radio. Uh -huh. Which goes to show you a lot of times what you thought your avenue was going to be totally swerves. Mm -hmm. It's sure. crazy. So the right doors open for me and I just really loved radio. And I think it's interesting to listen to what other people see as your talents too. He took an interest in you. He saw a talent that you may not have even necessarily sure. seen in yourself. Sure. Um, and then helped to really propel your yeah. career. Yeah. Uh, when you first started out, what made you decide, okay, I'm going to go major in this? Well, you know, I was always a tomboy. You know, I and I love to talk. I, you couldn't shut me up for anything. I love to tell stories. No. I love people's stories. Yeah, I know it's shocking, right? <laughs> and that was just always my forte. I always had this great knack for communicating with people, and that was just my strong suit. And I hated math. So, <laughs> so and, well, here's the thing, though. I wanted to initially be an astronaut, but I kept throwing up at space camp, and I was like, this just isn't Aww. for me. I know I'm such a nerd. I love science. So I thought, well, hey, That's let's sad, being in Texas, you could have been like stayed close to home I and been know. In, you know, in Houston. In Houston, <laughs> but yeah. anyway, so I just really had a knack for talking to people and communicating well and just writing and all that stuff. And so I'm like, well, I it's a no-brainer. I have to mm -hmm. do this for a living. And so that's kind of what happened. And then I was a huge tomboy, so I loved sports. And it was just kind of the both worlds kind of colliding. Okay, so looking back on your career, you said almost you know 20 years. What would be the biggest advice you'd give to 19-year-old Jasmine starting out? Oh, my gosh. Oh, geez. <laughs> this is a little too deep. Um, Do, actually, I want there to be two answers. Okay. I want there to be a an answer for your for personal and then a professional answer. Okay, personal don't say yes to those boys. That'd be my personal one because there were Simple. a lot of bad ones. I get it. Yes, you get it too, Miss Jenny. Um, professionally, I would. I always had this. It's funny. I was always ingrained to be this person who never. I always hustled. I never. I never expected things. Um, I was a kid that just always had that in me. Yeah. Um, and so, if I was to professionally give myself advice, then. Um, 
I would say don't necessarily pigeonhole yourself into thinking you could only do one thing. Mm. Because the more I was in this industry, the more I taught myself, learned from other people to do other things. So I can do multiple things, mm -hmm. you know, like if it's the production aspect, the on-air aspect, the writing aspect, the content aspect, all of that. I, I sort of kind of just absorbed and I, <laughs> at 19, I wouldn't have thought I would have known the full gamut of doing everything. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it it would have just been that one tunnel vision. No, I'm this role only. Mm -hmm. And that's just not how life is. And yeah. so that was a nice surprise. <laughs> Managers value that too so much, sure. you know, diversity yeah. of skill set. Job security kids. Right. Well, and, and <laughs> Don't you make know, yourself fireable. <laughs> so this is a topic that's come up several times in the Facebook group and also through email is people who are looking to make a career transition. And you and I actually yes. <laughs> both left our jobs like within a week of each other sure basically <laughs> and you know i and it's funny and i was telling you this kind of you know but offline. somehow we're still working we're still working but i think inherently when you are at a point in your life this is the first time in my life where things are kind of unwritten for me i'm very type a i'm very responsible and no if i'm going to close one door by god this other door is going to be open mm -hmm. okay i've never lived my life with well, caution in the wind that gives oh, we me anxiety jumped off a cliff oh we jumped off a cliff sister we, we with no parachute we didn't even know the other was doing it exactly and for me i was at a point in my life where listen on a base level life is too short you're not defined by your job you're not defined by your boss the people mm -hmm. around you you're defined by what you make of your life and i knew at that time it was the perfect time for me to go you know what i maybe need to try something else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. And that involved me just cold turkey leaving and not necessarily having something secure, secure on the other side. I've got some things, you know, some people have approached me and I've got some projects I'm doing, but it's not like it's been for me before. Mm -hmm. And while it's terrifying, it's also exhilarating. And I'm really having an intense growth process with myself at this age in my life. And it's funny because I always joke with my boyfriend, I feel like, this is something I'd be doing at 20. This mm -hmm. is reckless. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, almost 40 doing mm -hmm. this. So, ah, <laughs> you know, but yeah, I want, sure. so it's scary. Yeah, yeah. I, I really want to end with that message, intense growth process. Yeah. Um, because I know a lot of people listening are, are listening because they're like, oh, I'm not sure if I still love what I used to love. Maybe exactly. I do, maybe I don't. You know, I mean, you have to figure it out financially, but, but think about the possibility for that intense growth process and whether you know, the time could be now for that, maybe not. Yeah. Um, but thank you for sharing that. Oh, no, thank you for letting me do that. And I want you to tell everybody where they can find your podcast too, because Jasmine has a fabulous podcast. Thank like you. I said, I really like to promote others. That thank are, you. Uh, making good content. So it's called First and Tens Podcast.com is the website. Um, it's me and my best friend. We basically commission this fantasy football league of all women. And it's, it's not, it's not like a heavy geeky sports stat you know podcast this is all about drama and women some of them know not a lick about football some of them know a lot um but at the end of the day we're all catty <laughs> and we all try to one-up each other and so there's a lot of drama with that um you'll hear on the podcast from all the girls so it's it's basically relied on the stats heavy on the entertainment is kind of like our mantra so, so yeah fun. we're on itunes spotify it. google play stitcher all of it love it and yeah. what are your uh social media handles um i'm just at jasmine sadry on everything, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, find me there. Love it. Matt? Oh, wait, he's, he's switching things yeah. around. The hot switch. <laughs> Came to me first. I was not Sorry. Ready. That's his Twitter I know, handle. It's because uh, I'm filling in for Heath. <laughs> oh. uh, Matt Stoker 1 on Instagram. Find me. Oh, me? Okay, I'm sorry. That's you. I'm sorry, I'm I went out of order. order. No, no, no. I, hey, you should throw him a bone. He wasn't mentioned in that email. I'm at Apple Zacintosh on Twitter and Instagram. I'll be on that Facebook group, too. Facebook.com slash group slash second shot. Come check it out. Don't give up on the show. You know that Heath will be back next week with all of his <laughs> or will he? of wisdom, his <laughs> accent, the whole bit. We I am Jenny him. Anchondo, Jenny Anchondo TV on Twitter. And the real fun goes down on Instagram, Jenny Anchondo, with all the behind the scenes of Heath. Have a great week, everybody. Destination for premium talk radio.